Well, here's a view of the breadboarded or partially breadboarded power supply that I'm going to use for this. Um, this is going to put out 12 and a half volts. Basically, it's in mean, kind of a ramshackle position here because I have all this stuff up here to get it out of my way so I can clean this bench. I've got some discrete diodes there as a bridge rectifier. I've got two um, thousand microfarad 50 volt electrolytics in um, parallel. I've got a uh, 47 ohm 10 watt resistor in line with them to limit the current so that those uh, you don't get quite as big of a surge charging those two capacitors up and that little resistor there is nothing more than just a bleeder resistor it's about 100 kilo ohms or something just to so I can bleed them off those two capacitors off a little bit quicker as I was experimenting and then this is that little uh, the little uh, LM 2596 natural semiconductor simple switcher module that I got from a Chicom supplier that entire module there complete was around a dollar, a little more than a dollar, so it was kind of hard to justify buying my own discrete components to build one of those. And then it just ties into the rest of the circuit here. It's outputting 12 and a half volts. And I'm not sure what the current draw is on this. Probably at the end of the video I'll shut this off and then put a multimeter across and we'll see what it is. But switching power supplies definitely have some uh, noise to them some ripple and one thing I have there right now that I won't pull out because I'm using that as my um, basis for my oscilloscope as far as where the leads tie together I put this 100 nanofarad 50 volt ceramic cap across the power rails and that provided some noise relief um, you can see what the waveform is now, and as bad as that looks, it was a lot worse before I put that 100 nanofarad across there. And what would happen was, for whatever reason, when it was on red and switched from, right before it would switch from red back to green, this power supply would go into a crazy oscillation and just go nuts until it switched to green, then it was just fine again, and then it would repeat that cycle every single time and that single 100 nanofarad capacitor cured that so that's where I started out at and then I did a lot of experimenting with different other values and I'll show you the results of what I come up with as far as the best values but if you can see here this isn't exactly the optimal setup for a switching power supply I've got all these long leads running everywhere so that might be part of part of the noise and the oscillation problem but when this thing's in service I may not be able to um, make leads as short as I would like to anyways so I'm gonna probably leave this filtering system that I developed through trial and error in there. I'll put this on the tripod and I'll show you. It should be set up here to look at the waveform on the oscilloscope. Okay, like I said that 100 nanofarad 50 volt ceramic was a definite improvement. Now I'm going to take a 10 microfarad tantalum capacitor, 50 volt weight rated, and put it in line, and you'll see how much better that waveform becomes. It's going to take me a second or two here to do this. This is kind of a tight position. There, that's a lot better, isn't it? But it can still improve. I was at 200 millivolts per division, now at 50 millivolts per division, it shows you know, approximately 50 millivolts. So then, at this point I did a lot of experimenting with different capacitors I had on hand, some smaller for high frequencies, some larger. I had some 
aluminum electrolytics that I put in place and none of those made any change or improvement at all even some of the high ESR ones that I had um, if you ever did much experimenting with an aluminum electrolytic capacitor at 100 kilohertz that capacitor basically disappears and this switcher runs I believe at around 100 kilohertz so I did some searching in my parts box and I came up and also I should mention that I put more tantalums in parallel with this one more 10 microfarad and smaller and larger I think I had a 15 or 16 or whatever and basically it made no difference at all from what I got right here with the 10 microfarad but one thing that I did have and I only have one of these I didn't even know where it came from I've got a 10 microfarad multi-layer ceramic capacitor and as you'll see here in a second it's it makes a pretty significant improvement it's only rated for 25 volts but this is only 12 and a half volt output I usually for switching supply I usually try to go at least twice or two either twice to two and a half times the output voltage but I don't think this I think with the as long as I keep the other capacitors in line to quiet this thing down I don't think that this 25 volt will be rated too low that's going to be a little bit tough for me to get this in here because the leads are long and they're really skinny I keep they want to kind of buckle under so it might take me a second to get this in here and then you'll see the difference it makes there that quieted down even more so where are we at now let's see if I can get this thing to trigger there we go okay we're at 20 millivolts per division now so that's dropped that down to you know, approximately maybe slightly more than 20 millivolts depending upon where in the cycle this thing is at so that's a lot better and certainly a huge improvement from the beginning when we were at 200 millivolts per division and several divisions up on that now one last thing that I tried and I probably have to shut the camera off and hook it up I'm not sure if it's I've changed the lead configuration a little bit so I'm not sure this is going to be effective anymore but I wound this little inductor onto a ferrite bead <coughs> put about six or seven turns onto it and that quieted a lot of this down as well I couldn't go it's, like I said after that molly layer, layer ceramic any capacitor I tried made no difference at all at that point and this inductor previously with the longer leads I originally had to set up to where I had my alligator clips hooked on and you know that gave me an extra foot and a half of lead on the output of that switching regulator which obviously is really bad and then since then I've tied it as directly as I could so I'll shut the camera off I'll put this in line and we'll see if that makes any difference anymore it did previously but I'm not sure if it still will so I'll be back okay I am back and I put that inductor in line and look at that we're at 20 millivolts per division and that is completely eliminated the ripple go down to 10 go down to 5 and what we're seeing here at 5 millivolts per division is more than anything the noise coming from the lights I have a bunch of you know, I'm down here in the basement with fluorescent lights everywhere and also off to my left there I've got a full server system that my kid takes care of that makes so much electrical noise that I can't run the radio down here anymore because it's nothing but a high frequency squeal if I try so I would say that that pretty much eliminated any of the ripple worthwhile out of that power supply so that's what I'm going to go with and I'll pull this off here again and I'll show you where that inductor is at I essentially 
don't know if you can see it there, I'm trying to look through the viewfinder. I essentially just put that choke, basically, I guess is what it is, in line with the positive 12 and a half volt lead, and that just completely quieted everything down. Now if I pull these capacitors out and just leave this choke in by itself, this thing goes into severe oscillation. So it needs a combination of these capacitors and this choke in order to quiet this supply down. But I think this is how I'm going to build this supply. I'm going to have these probably on the board right before the power goes into um, the 555s over there. And that should provide a nice clean signal. Nearly as clean as if I'd have built, say, a LM7812 base linear regulator, which would produce a lot of heat and wouldn't be nearly as efficient as what this simple, simple switcher regulator is. So I think this is what I'm going to go with, and I'm going to let you know this thing still cycling along, no problems, and I'm going to run this for probably about a day. Um, the Triax. Try not to get electrocuted here. These are this is as, as an isolated tab on it, so I can do this. But the triax are totally cool. This has been running over an hour, actually a couple hours now. So I'm not sure. I may still put a little heat sink on them. I'm not sure. I don't know if there's really any reason to. These particular triax are rated 600 volt max. 15 volt mag or 15 volt continuous with I think maybe like a 20 volt or 20 amp surge or something like that. So it's definitely not um, overpowered. I'm only let's see, I'm only pulling 350 milliamps on this whole system. So Things are moving right along and it's really kind of gotten to the point where I need to start constructing this on an actual board instead of this spaghetti tube of wires everywhere. But just thought I'd show a little bit more of the development on this and hopefully next video maybe I'll have some of this stuff soldered together.